What's going on, Raider Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Raider Critique. I'm Raider Gun, and yeah, this is my post-game review for Week 11, 2021 against the Bengals, where we have suffered another shellacking from an AFC team that we really needed a must-win on. As I'm sorry that if I don't feel or if I'm not all happy and flamboyant like the rest of these other podcasters. Because, well, what the fuck is there to be happy about? We just took an ass whooping from the Cincinnati Bengals in a must-win game. Dropping our record to 5-5 five and five, while they have improved their record to 6-4. 32-13. That means that there was only one touchdown scored in this game by the Raiders. Well, we're going to go over here and we're going to do the stats. Um, this is your post-game week 11 and your pre-game for the Dallas Cowboys on Thanksgiving. So how about we hop on over here into the stats, man. Derek Carr. Went 19-27 for 215 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Another huge glaring problem in the room was the run game. Josh Jacobs, nine carries for 37 yards, averaging 4.1 on the average. As a matter of fact, that's not really all that bad. We just got away from the run game. And it's because we fell behind. We fell behind quite early. It was uh, 10 to 6 for the longest time. Uh, Kenyon Drake had five carries for 23 yards, averaging 4.6. Hunter Renfro on a jet sweep, one for five. Deshaun Jackson, I believe, also on a jet sweep, one for four. Peyton Barber, first run play of the game, one for three. We only ran him once. And then we also tried to run Brian Edwards. He didn't catch any, he, did, he didn't get any yards on his run play. Now, Darren Waller. Yeah, Darren, Darren Waller, eight, man. Seven receptions, 116 yards, no touchdowns. He was targeted eight times. Hunter Renfro, four receptions, 30 yards. He was also targeted four times. Josh Jacobs, five receptions on seven targets for 24 yards. Zay Jones, one reception, two targets, 20 yards. Foster Morrow, who had our lone touchdown, which was, you know, it was a beautiful play. Uh, one for 19 on two targets. Kenyon Drake, one for six. So, defense. We didn't have a single interception on a quarterback who has the most interceptions in the league, might I add. Denzel Perryman, nine tackles, three assists. Two of those tackles were for a loss. Jonathan Abrams, six tackles, six assists. Carl Nassib had four tackles. One of those was for a loss. Casey Hayward, three tackles, one assist. One of those was for a loss. Corey Littleton, three tackles, six assists. Brandon Fashon, three tackles, three assists. Nate Hobbs, three tackles, one assist. KJ Wright, two tackles. Quentin Jefferson, two tackles. One of those was a sack. Uh, and of course, that's if it's a sack, it's obviously for a loss. Jonathan Hankins, one tackle, one assist. Damian Square, one tackle, one assist. Dolan Levitt, one tackle, three assists. Max Crosby, which Dolan Levitt actually picked up that fumble on the very first drive of the game, putting us in the red zone, and we couldn't capitalize, just like normal. Max Crosby, one tackle, two assists. One of those was for a loss. Cleveland Farrell had the most pressures on the day. He was actually in the backfield a lot more than what his stats say. He had one tackle. Trayvon Morig, one tackle. And then we have Markel Lee and Foster Moreau basically going off with goose eggs. Bubbles. Derek Carr had one fumble. This is an absolute terrible fumble. Of course, he lost that fumble. Kenyon Drake had one fumble, but he didn't lose it. Yannick Ngakwe forced a fumble, 
And then, of course, Dolan Levitt, which I was speaking about earlier, was the one who picked up that fumble. Special teams. Daniel Carlson, two for two on field goals. 47 was as long. He had one. He was one for one on extra points. Punting, A.J. Cole, four punts, averaging 46.5 yards. Two of those were inside the 20, and his longest punt was 54 yards. A.J. Cole, you, you fucking rock, dude. I didn't think that I would actually be happy after we got rid of Marquette King. But you are a bright spot on this team, and I hope we keep you. No joke about that. Punt returns. Kenyon Drake had, or Hunter Renfro had two returns. 11.5 average. 12 was as long. And then on kickoff returns, Kenyon Drake, three returns for 17 yards. And his long was 24 yards. Now the glaring area in the room is something that I talked about last week during the pregame. Look, Joe Burrow went 20 to 29 for 148 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions, which I mean it's not great stats at all by any means. But then when you go down here and you look at rushing, Joe Mixon had 30 carries for 123 yards and two touchdowns, averaging 4.1. Tyler Boyd had one carry for 14 yards. That was on a jet sweep. Joe Burrow, three carries for 11, averaging 3.7. Jamar Chase, two carries for eight yards, averaging four. And Samaji Perrine, two carries, three yards, averaging 1.5. Tyler Boyd, six receptions for 49 yards and receiving. He was targeted eight times. Jamar Chase, Three receptions, 32 yards, targeted six times. Samaj Purine, three receptions, 18 yards, targeted three times. T. Higgins, two receptions, 15 yards on three targets. And the list goes on and on. Interceptions for them was Eli Apple. Eli Apple was the one, you know, the guy that we were supposed to be targeting in terms of other podcasters because he wasn't very good. Well, when you test somebody and you talk shit about them, this is what happens. Now, I know a lot of you guys are just looking for shit to talk about, but would you please stop talking shit about the other team and tend to our team? Because when you seem to talk shit about all these other players, they seem to show up just to play well against us. Okay, Sam Hubbard had two tackles for a loss, one sack. He had three tackles and two assists. All right, and then Trey Hendrickson also had a sack. Evan McPherson, their kicker, was four for four on field goals, 54 being as long, two for three on extra points. Oh, oh God, Raider Nation. Raider Nation. This is what we deal with. Cincinnati put up 19 points on us in the fourth quarter. And it literally was an absolute shellacking by the Bengals. Now, I'm still sitting here scratching my head wondering what went wrong. Can we blame the flags? Yannick Ngakwe got flagged for a shove. Now last time I checked, whether you're a kicker, a punter, a quarterback, a running back, hell, even people on the sideline have taken hits. Coaches, cameramen have taken hits harder than Joe Burrow on that un uh, unnecessary roughness flag that was thrown by these fucking referees nothing happened to them but because Yannick Ngakwe wears the silver and black one little shove one little pussy ass shove and it straight up kept the damn drive alive for the Cincinnati Bengals these referees 
that they, they are definitely a part of the problem. Okay, these fucking referees suck. They have, we have been fighting the referees for years, but it's blatantly obvious that when you barely touch somebody and they throw a motherfucking flag to extend the drive, this is outrageous, this is asinine, and I don't understand how in the hell that we can even sit here and watch these games knowing damn well this is what the fuck they're going to do to us. Every single solitary time. Now, I'm going to still watch the games, but man, my middle finger salute goes to the referees real fucking quick like you guys are paid off by the NFL to fucking flag us every chance you get. And I hope somebody sees your ass in the parking lot and beats the dog shit out of you. You motherfuckers are a joke. There was a reason why you bitch ass motherfuckers got replaced in the past and they need to replace you again. But that's not the only glaring problem here. This game was a must win. And now we are now 5-5 five and five because we didn't win. And we are now, again, down at the bottom of the AFC West, fighting for our lives. Fighting for our lives to try to make it into the playoffs. And now here we are on Turkey Day. And I don't even have anything bad to say about this Dallas Cowboys team. A lot of people like to talk shit about them. I live here in Texas. I have to deal with these fuckhead fans all the time. And you know what? I don't even really hate them. You know what I mean? Because they get fucked just as much as we do. There was an intentional grounding that should have been thrown against Patrick Mahomes going against these Cowboys last week. Never fucking got thrown. So they've been getting fucked by the referees too. Right off the bat. So basically, we could call this game the teams who are fucked by the referees playing off on Thanksgiving. That's basically what I'm going to see. That's basically what I'm going to say. Because, you know, it's all going to be... The, the, the point is on this game here, it's going to be who has the flags thrown at them the most. Well, Dallas was able to hold the Chiefs to 16 points. Well, we gave up 41 points against this same team. So, I actually believe that we're going to catch an L on this one. I'm not going to give a, a prediction, not until I do my Tecmo Super Bowl cut. Because, to be honest with you, at least with the Tecmo Super Bowl cut, at least we'll be able to watch the Raiders win at least once. Because I don't think we're winning this game. As a matter of fact, I think Dallas is probably going to come out firing after being fucked last week against the, the Chiefs. And they're going to come out and they're going to take out all their aggressions on us. Especially with all the problems that we see on this football team. When you look at the sidelines, they're all grab-assing around on the Raiders' sideline. It, there's no sense of urgency whatsoever into making this a game. We were down 10-6 to six through, what, two quarters? Three quarters? We, we went down 13-6 to six by the third quarter. The game was still within reach. I went out and hung out with Scream and Raider MC Square, and we sat there, and you know, I wasn't even drinking at first. But boy, when it came down to the third quarter, yeah, we started doing shots. We started putting back the beers. We already knew what was going to happen. We already saw it. Derek Carr's over here on the sideline, smirking, laughing, and then looking depressed. You know, there's no sense of urgency. There's, there's no playing to win. Not on that sideline. This team looked absolutely outrageous on offense besides Darren Waller and the lackluster play calling from Greg Olson. This is what I was talking about when it came to Greg Olson. There's a lot of other podcasters out there who like him. Said, you know, real nice guy. Talk to him. Well, of course they're nice guys. They have to be professional. I mean, they don't want you to hate them. They don't want to be dicks to you. Because for the simple fact, you know, they really are just people like us too. 
They just happen to be in much better positions and make a shit ton more money than a lot of us do. But it's us fans who dump a shit ton of money into this franchise, who dump a shit ton of dump a shit ton of money into buying their merchandise okay and to come out here and to 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 knowing that we drop this money hell i waste my time coming out here and doing these videos about the raider nation for a team that obviously doesn't give a fuck about me they don't give a fuck about my feelings they don't give a fuck about y'all's feelings either because if they did they would play better they would win they would win these games that we are supposed to win. And they would keep it competitive with the teams that we are actually calling that we're going to lose to. Now, I have no idea how this game on Thanksgiving is going to turn out. But I'm pretty sure we're going to take an L. I'm saying that we're probably going to lose, I would say, 21 to 10. Or possibly even 21 to 3. Here's the injury report for this Thanksgiving game. Now you got Daniel Carlson. He was in full participation. He was out due to an illness. You know, the big glaring ones that are right out here is John Simpson. John Simpson is in full participation, but he has been dealing with an injury himself. Now I'd like to go ahead and see if I can bring that up because I can't see that. You know, it's on such a small screen over here. So I'm going to have to look it up on my phone. Okay. It also looks like the Cowboys are getting their Pro Bowl left tackle back, Tyron Smith. Okay. Now, Kenyon Drake was in full participation. He was out due to a knee. Brandon Faceon who, by the way, also got a couple flags thrown at him in that game during the Bengals, one of them with a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit, which, look, I understand that we are trying to do everything we can. As the NFL, they're trying to do everything they can to make sure that people play safe. But you've got to let these motherfuckers play football. You've got to let them play football instead of being fucking flag-happy. You know, sometimes I think that the game would be better if there were no referees at all. Blatant holding calls against our defensive line. Uh, Yannick Ngakwe, Jonathan Hankins, Solomon Thomas, who actually happened to get a sack, Max Crosby, they're being held all game long. Hardly any flags were thrown in this game against the Bengals. As a matter of fact, I believe throughout the first three quarters, the Bengals didn't have a single flag. Obviously, obviously blatant that they are going against us. The NFL is blatantly going against us. The referees are definitely against us, even when we're playing at home. Nick Kwiatkowski, he's not going to be out there this game, just like he wasn't last game. He is dealing with an ankle injury. Yannick Ngogwe, he's dealing with a rib injury even though he is in full participation. Keyshawn Nixon, okay, he didn't participate, he's out. All right, Jalen Richard, it was in full participation on Wednesday. So we actually might get to see him play we could sure use him. We could sure use some type of some, something to ignite this team, to ignite this offense especially because this is this offense sucks. This offense is terrible. Outside of Darren Waller, this offense is absolutely terrible. Not the same offense that we have been accustomed to seeing at the beginning of the season. Okay? Like I said, John Simpson, he was limited. He is questionable to even come into this game. Dylan Stoner was in full participation. He has an Achilles injury. And Andre James, our center, he is also in full participation. He's got a hurt thumb. Now the Dallas Cowboys, Ezekiel Elliott, full participation. 
Tristan Hill, foot injury, full participation. C.D. Lamb has not participated due to a concussion. He was limited on Wednesday. He is questionable. It is the only one who is questionable. Well, they also do not list that Amari Cooper will not be playing due to COVID. Cedric Wilson, another wide receiver, shoulder injury. He was in full participation. Uh, Donovan Wilson, shoulder and chest. He didn't participate at all. He went to IR. <laughs> Excuse me. And then, I believe that's Nashawn Wright. Hamstring, full participation all the way across the board. So this game is winnable. It is very winnable as long as we can do what we have to do to win. What I said last game, isolating Joe Mixon was an absolute must, and we couldn't do it. Well, the Dallas Cowboys have not one badass running back, but they have two badass running back with Ezekiel Elliott and Pollard. And they've both just been absolutely eating up defenses. And we can't stop the run to save our life. I literally, as the way this team is played, I had a tailgate ticket to this game. I sold that motherfucker. Because there is absolutely no way I am going up to Jerry World and watching this team fall apart in front of my eyes just to where I could be pissed off as a motherfucker on the three and a half hour ride home. No fucking way. Absolutely no way I'm going to this game because I already know what the fuck's going to happen this game. We're going to lay a motherfucking egg. Okay? Now, if you go and look on Twitter and you go and look at a lot of the other podcasts going on here, shout out to Graphic Raider for breaking this, but there's supposedly beef in between Darren Waller and Derek Carr. And this doesn't bode well for us, Raider Nation. Our two supposedly best players are beeping. They're not talking to each other. And if this is absolutely true, we're in trouble. We're in absolute trouble. Now, Docs was the first one to break this. His sources, which are pretty goddamn legitimate, all right, have been saying this. Now, if this is true, man, and Raiders Scout with his... Uh, expertise how he found out because you know he was the one who told Graphic Raider you know what I'm saying uh, there is you know legitimate beef in between these two players two hundred and fifteen yards passing Ain't gonna do it. We have watched Derek Carr lay an egg the last three weeks. To the point now, you know who I am. If you've been here a while, you know what I stand for. I've been a huge Derek Carr fan. Huge Derek Carr fan. I've been on Raider Cody's podcast talking about how good Carr was. I would go on the Hardcore Raider Nation podcast when Hardcore Raider was still doing this and back Derek Carr. I've even been on Raider Ben's channel backing Derek Carr. I was also pissed at Derek Carr during one of the segments that we did over there on StreamYard. You know, but I was just angry. I was mad. But, you know, I keep seeing... Our quarterback basically shrug everything off, especially this last this last press conference. Look. This last podcast or this this last press conference. Derek Carr, there's no sense of urgency. He doesn't seem like he even wants to be here anymore. He seemed rattled. He seemed pissed. I mean, to the point to where, you know, he basically back-talked Q Myers from the Locked On Raider Nation podcast and also uh, 
uh, Raider Nation Radio 920, you know, after he asked a question, you know, like, where's the sense of urgency? Are you guys not playing with a sense of urgency? You don't seem like you're playing with all the heart that you were playing at the beginning of the season. And, you know, Derek Carr basically just, like, shrugged him off and got real snippy with him. And I understand why he would. He's probably tired of everything falling down on him. Well, you know, you're the leader, bro. You are the leader of this team, especially now that Gruden's gone. And I understand that with John Gruden not being here, there's a lot of pressure put on you, and you're just not providing what we need to win these games. Like, literally, you're falling apart at the seams. You've mentally checked out. And we see it year after year after year. Ever since you got hurt in 2016, you ain't been the same. You haven't been the same. You've gotten smarter. You've you've learned how to do your reads better. But that interception was absolutely ugly. That interception was absolutely ugly. And when we were still in the game, okay, basic fundamental football, you're being chased down from behind. How do you fumble? How do you fumble? You're supposed to cover the ball up. Now, from what I've went and looked at his whole career, he's averaging 10 fumbles a season. He's been in the league eight years, and you're telling me you can't hold on to the damn ball? You can't cover the motherfucker up when you're about to go down? This is unreal, homie. Unreal, dude. And you know, he ain't been the same since the injury. He also ain't been the same since he got his extension. Since he was making, since he's making all this damn money. He sits there and he goes in on press conferences. Oh, it's all on me. It's all on me. It's all on me. Yeah, it's all on you. So why don't you fucking do something about it? All right. You're too busy fucking praying with other players' teams who were uh, other teams' players who were literally trying to take your damn head off. You're not playing with that grit that we need for a Raider quarterback. Because, you know, and there's a lot of Derek Carr supporters out there. I used to be one. As a matter of fact, I hope as a person, Derek Carr, you succeed. You are a wonderful, wonderful person. But as a Raiders quarterback, man, you're not doing too well. You might have broke records. You might have the all-time passing yards for any Raider quarterback in history. But you've been here eight seasons, and we've been to the playoffs once. The playoffs where you didn't even get to play because you broke your fibula. And ever since you broke your fibula, you've been... You've been looking like a deer in headlights, man. A dog in headlights, as a matter of fact. Standing in the middle of the road, just waiting to get creamed by my truck. And then we sit there and look at you on the sidelines. And you have just this absolute, this, just this, this look of I'm defeated all over your face. Now, what I want to understand, what I want to know, is how come Mariota hasn't been put in the game yet? If anybody can see this, this is what Mariota was brought in for. Mariota was brought in in case this dude slipped off. And I think the Raider Nation's fed up with you, Derek Carr. You've got a few supporters out there. You've got a few guys out there who still think you're the absolute best quarterback for our needs, for our team. But I'm not there anymore, bro. I've backed you for eight years. I have made excuses for you year after year after year. And I keep hearing the same excuses over and over and over again. Now that I'm even fed up, I'm even tired of hearing the excuses. Boy, he hasn't had a true number one. He, the offensive line doesn't really block for him. Oh, we need to get him a defense. Excuse after excuse after excuse. Well, you know what? Excuses are like assholes. Everybody's got one, and they all stink. 
I'm not coming up with any more excuses for you, Derek Carr. Not at all, man. And I think a lot of the Raider Nation is probably finally sitting in the back applauding that the Raider Critique has finally removed the blinders from his eyes and sees you for exactly what you are under your performance. You're a game manager. You're a game manager. You're obviously not elite. You're a very good quarterback. You're a great guy. But you're only good. And you choke under pressure. You get scared. And then when things don't go your way, you sit on the sideline and pout. Now, dudes like Aaron Rodgers don't do that. Dudes like Tom Brady don't do that. When it gets tough for them, they buck up and they bring this team, they bring their team back to win the game. Now, maybe it doesn't happen all the time, but more often than not, those quarterbacks are feared in the league because they don't quit. Derek Carr, you quit. You literally do. You quit. And I can only imagine that we are going to move on from you next season. You know, we're not, you have 19 million due. Or you could get franchise tagged. I don't think you're going to get either one. I think, I think they're going to let you walk. And I think you probably done costed basically the whole front office their job. There's no telling if Mayock will be here next year. But I can tell you this. with If you wind up being gone, that means Gruden's going to be gone. Ruggs is gone. Arnett's gone. And then Derek Carr. The supposed nucleus of this team is going to be gone. And now we've already got to the point to where if this is true, our best player doesn't even want to play with you anymore. And it's a, it's under suspicion that he is going to ask for a trade if you're the quarterback next year. Now, a lot of people want to sit there and say, oh, we're not going to be able to get Devontae Adams if Derek Carr isn't here. Well, you know what? We got Deshaun Jackson. We've got Brian Edwards. We've got Hunter Renfro. Devontae Adams would be nice. But if getting Devontae Adams means keeping you, I don't want him. Because I, for one, don't want you anymore. After eight years... And I don't care. I'm going to have to change my whole intro. I'm going to have to wipe you pretty much out. I don't want you anymore. Even though it's going to create a whole shit ton more work for me just to keep this content, this channel going and the content going, I don't want you anymore. I don't. I think it's time to move on from you. It really is. And I know a lot of other Raider Nation, a lot of other Raider fans, and possibly... Even a lot of the players on the damn team who don't want you here anymore because you just don't play with a sense of urgency. My keys to the game are stop the run. All right? They don't have Amari Cooper. CeeDee Lamb may not show up, which means Gallup is going to be their number one wide receiver, which means that they are going to try to run the ball with those two badass running backs of theirs. Number one. The critiques, keys of the game, which I have three, okay? Stop the run. Number two, limit the penalties. Don't do anything stupid to give these referees something to throw a flag at. That's not key number two. And key number three, start Marcus Mariota. And that's exactly how I feel about it. If you start fucking up, Derek Carr, you need to be yanked. And we need to see what Mariota's got. Because that's what we brought him in here for. That's why he's the highest paid backup and the best backup in the whole NFL. That's why we brought him in here. And I think it's time, and I've been a firm, firm guy saying that we should only use Mariota in packages. Let's bring him in, man. Let's see what he's got. Because I've already seen enough of Derek Carr. 
Now, we've got more things to go over. We understand that a lot of the problems stem around the John Gruden email debacle. And I've already got another guest for that. Raider Raw. And we're going to go ahead and do that on Saturday after the game on Thursday. That's when we're going to go ahead and continue on with the John Gruden email chronicles. And I'm sure he's going to have a lot to say. This dude is from my Raider Nation chapter. He's got a lot of good points. He's also got a lot of different views. And that's why I'm bringing him in. He's got a lot of different views. A lot of different insight. You know what I'm saying? And I do appreciate him and I appreciate his opinion and I value his opinion because this guy's been telling me for two years now about how we should have got rid of Derek Carr and well, now he happens to be right because I'm right there on the wagon with him. It is what it is, Raider Nation. Marcus Mariota needs to come in and take control of this team. He needs to come in and take control of this team and we need to see what he's got because I honestly, I'm just not sold on Derek Carr no more. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. I have uh, had some mad issues even coming out here and, and talking about this. I know I'm going to piss a lot of people off with this video. I don't give a fuck, man. I don't give a fuck anymore. This is my opinion. My channel, my opinion. Don't like it? Leave. Having fucking super fans come at me telling me that I shouldn't down Derek Carr. That all the car haters and this and that. I'm just starting to sound like them. I've given him plenty of opportunities. Just like the rest of the Raider Nation. Now look, I don't dress up in a uniform and go out here and parade around and sell my patches to where I can go to these games. I use my hard-earned money that I fucking earned to go to these games. Not to sit here and watch these motherfuckers fall apart. So what makes you think that I shouldn't have a motherfucking opinion? My own opinion. If you don't like my opinion, we'll wrap it up nice and tight and stuff it up your ass. Because I don't give a fuck if you like my opinion or not. You can lick my nutsack. You dig? At least I'm not out there fucking making money off the Raider Nation logo, off the Raiders logo, just to where you can go to fucking football games. And you call yourself a real Raider. Kiss my ass. I'm real, motherfucker. I've been real, and I've been here since day one. Since 1991, when I was finally able to make my own decisions. And I definitely don't do it for money. And that's the bottom line. I'm not here to sit there and side with everybody else. Derek Carr doesn't pass the eye test anymore. He doesn't. And whether you want to sit there and run your mouth about it or not, mental health is definitely a problem. Okay, a lot of people out here want to sit there and claim about mental health and this and that, but then they want to fucking turn around and flip the script when it doesn't fit their narrative. You don't think this team isn't mentally and psychologically fucked up because of what John Gruden did? You think you're the only fucking one? Are you serious? Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. You're nobody fucking special. This is the Raider Critique. This episode is over. I will be out here tomorrow again with the Tecmo Super Bowl pregame prediction. Until then, motherfuckers, it is really Raider Nation for life.